Hi, I'm Eric Spensley. Today I'm going to show you guys how we built this shop filter on Spensley Design Co. We picked up a cheap 20 inch box fan and started working on completely taking it apart. First removing all the screws holding the front and back grills and then prying off the carrying handle and the speed control dial. We then removed the last four screws holding the fan onto the metal housing and carefully pulled the wires loose from the glue holding them down. With all that done, the fan was loose and we could get rid of the metal case. With our fan disassembled, we were able to move over to our table saw. Now we could start to break down all the pieces for the box. Now this project is not our specific design, we actually used the plans from Franklin Woodworks and we'll throw a link down to that in the description below. And with the pieces for the outer box broken down to their final width, we slid our table saw fence over to cut some small strips to hold all of the filters inside of the box. We brought out our crosscut sled and measured how long we needed to cut each of the side panels and set up a stop block at 20 inches. With the stop block, we could then make repeated cuts to bring all the panels down to the exact same size. And if you want to learn how to build this crosscut sled for yourself, we put a link up in the cards above. Now since we're building this project almost entirely out of scrap MDF, it's incredibly dusty. So do your lungs a favor and wear a respirator whenever you're working with this stuff. And while we had the slut out, we cut all of our interior strips down to their final lengths too. Just follow the cut list in the plans and you'll have everything dialed in perfectly for this project. Now at this point, you should have 6 strips that are 20 inches long, 12 that are 19 and 1 quarter inch long, but you can see I had a hard time reading the plans and actually only cut 6, 6 strips that are 18 and a half inches long, and then 4 equally sized panels to construct the box. Construction of the box is super easy, but you have to take it slow and make sure that you're building it correctly. I grabbed two side panels and then spread a little bit of glue on them and lined it up with the other board and held everything tight with some clamps. Now the glue would be pretty strong here, but just to make sure, we're going to throw in some screws. So I pre-drilled and countersunk some holes before coming back to drive screws in them. And while we put the other side of the box together, we wanted to remind you to head over to Instagram and follow us at Spensley Design Co. so you can stay up to date on all the projects that we're working on. Over there, we also post tons of behind the scenes videos and photos so you'll get some exclusive content. Go check it out and tell us what you think. With the three sides attached, we started adding the wood strips to hold in the air filters. Now in order to get the spacing correct, we just used a scrap piece between each spacer and removed it after the original piece had been nailed and glued down. We continued on attaching the rest of the strips to the interior of the box in the exact same way. And hey, if you made it this far in this video, you must like what you're seeing. It doesn't take you more than one second of your time to hit that thumbs up button down below. This helps us out a ton and it's a great way for you to say thanks for spending all the time that goes into making a video like this. No pressure, but it helps us out a lot. Thanks. Now the last side of the box that we need to apply the strips to isn't much different. Now instead of applying these strips directly to the panel that they're going to be touching, we're going to be making a door so we want these strips to be supported on their own. And to make that door, we needed to add a long piano hinge, but the one that we picked up from our home store was a little bit too long, so we cut it down to size using our Dremel and cutoff disc. And with the hinge down to size, we clamped it on the box and pre-drilled holes before installing the hinge with the included screws. We then set the door panel in place and attach the piano hinge to it. And hey, if you're liking this video, hit that subscribe button down below too. That way you don't miss out on any of our future builds and it really helps us out a lot. At the time of recording, our channel only has 103 subscribers, so anything you can do to help us out, we really appreciate. Thanks! 
With the door attached, we needed to add a latch to keep it closed. We found this cheap one in our damaged section at our home center that'll work perfectly for this application. We just marked out the holes, pre-drilled, and then came back with some screws to hold it securely onto the box. And now that the door is fully functional, we can return our attention back to the fan portion of this build. We cut two additional scrap pieces that'll hold the fan and drilled two holes that will allow us to bolt these pieces to the body of the fan. With the holes drilled, we threaded a bolt through the wood and then used a nut to give us some space away from the motor. Then we simply attached the wood to the motor. Now in order to keep the fan nice and rigid and not wobbling all over the place when it's on, we added two more scrap pieces at the top and bottom with some glue and brad nails. And then we could slide the entire fan assembly inside of the box. Once the fan was inside, we figured out where we wanted the power cord to come out and then we used a spade bit to drill a large hole. Now we did a little bit of research on air filters like this, and we found out that for some reason there needs to be some sort of round baffle around the fan that somehow increases the airflow. I'm not a geologist, but I'll take their word for it. it. Must be some kind of magic. So we grabbed some more MDF and then cut it down on the table saw into a perfectly sized square that would fit inside the filter box. The easiest way to find the center of a board is to draw lines from the corners and see where they meet in the middle. We could then pound a small nail into the center point of the board, and with the high-tech string around a marker trick, we can mark out a circle on the board that was just ever so slightly larger than the size of the fan blade. We drilled a small hole in the board to allow us to fit our jigsaw blade in. And then propped it up on some scrap wood and used our jigsaw from the early 90s to cut out the circle. Once the circle was cut out, we could slide it inside of our filter box and use a little bit of glue and some brad nails to hold it permanently in place. And right after that, we could slide the fan back in and secure that inside the box also. One of the last things we did was cut a small slit and a small scrap piece to help cover the hole where the power cord came out of the box. You could also use something like duct tape, but I think this will look a lot better on the overall design. And with that, we could open up the door and slide our filters in. This design has three super cheap filters in the back and then one HEPA filter in the front. This design makes sure that the vast majority of the dust gets captured by all the cheap filters and will keep the more expensive HEPA filter lasting much longer. This last step is definitely optional, but since we still have the fan grates laying around, we decided to attach them to the filter box to help protect from any inadvertent damage to the filters. It doesn't fit perfectly, but it's good enough for us, and all we needed to do was screw it into the box, and this project was done. This definitely is not the most exciting project in the world, but we're really excited to have it in our shop, as it definitely makes everything a lot easier to breathe in here. Right now, we're not exactly sure where we're going to keep this filter. We want to put it up in the ceiling at some point, but for right now, it's going to hang out on the bottom of our bench here. 